Call me in order. The agenda for the 10 o'clock Wednesday, April 15, 2020, Town of Qualica Beach Special Council being held sort of in chambers in each one's house, whatever you want to call that. I uh, recognize the fact we are holding this meeting on the lands of the Coast Salish people. Um, we have a late adder. Everyone's got that? Yes. Put that Thank in you. at number 2-3. So it'll be the last of staff reports. 2-2-B. Two, 2-3. Two, two, Correct? I believe it says 2-2-B. Two, two, uh, B. We can either do it that, it doesn't matter. Two, three is the same thing, same spot. Yes. Okay, we're good. Adoption of the agenda. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Walker. Um, I guess, yeah, we need to move her in a second, I guess. So I'll, I'll move the agenda as amended. Please, thank you. Second. Uh, second. Okay. And I'd like All to speak favor. to it. Yes, please, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I move to amend the agenda, inserting discussion relating to the importance of the privacy of personal medical information after section one. I'll second that. So I'll, I'll speak to that. Um, I'm proposing this amendment to the agenda so council can discuss an urgent issue. On April 7th, an email was sent by Councillor Harrison to a resident inferring that I had COVID and could have spread it in the community. I don't want to uh, discuss the email in detail, but more broadly, a conversation with Council about the importance of maintaining the privacy of personal medical information and the dangers of sharing false information. I just want to raise a point of order. That's a pretty gross mischaracterization, but I think we should have the debate. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? On the amendment? Of the um, amendment. Of okay, Councillor Walker's that. amendment. Okay, I'd like to speak to that. I, I'm opposed to that um, amend, uh, amendment from Councillor Walker. I think that personal information should be addressed at our in-camera session. So I will not support this. Councillor Walker. Uh, I'm not hoping to bring up personal information. I'm not hoping to bring up the details in the email. I'm talking. I'm hoping to discuss broadly the importance of um, the the importance of privacy, personal medical information, uh, and maintaining privacy, especially during this this provincial health emergency. Councillor Westbrook. Thank you, Chair. I think the the uh, motion, as you introduced, is very has very personal information, very spe specific. So it's not a broad discussion. It's now it's. Uh, very specific item, and I think it's inappropriate, so I will not support the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Walker. Uh, to to reread the motion, I move to amend the agenda, inserting discussion relating to the importance of the privacy of personal medical information after section one. I would typically think that you obviously had knew this was coming down the pipeline, that you could not give me some sort of headway you were going to bring this onto the agenda would have been good. Councillor Walker. Um, I was hoping you had promised me that you would arrange a phone conversation between myself and Councillor Harrison. I was hoping to deal with this discreetly. Um, the fact that I added this to the agenda was something that I was thinking about last night and was a decision I made this morning just prior to the meeting. Um, I was leaving that open to you to have arranged that phone conversation up until this point. I have spoken to both you, Councillor Harrison, and you, Councillor Walker. I am definitely not your keepers. You guys need to have a conversation. You need to have that conversation. I'm not the one that's going to crack the whip and make that happen. I've spoken to both of you about that conversation. I believe Councillor Harrison prefers email. He doesn't want to do a phone call. So I would suggest that maybe we go down that road first before we go down this one here today. Councillor Walker. Uh, it's been several days now that you promised and then I followed up with you saying that you would arrange a phone conversation. I'm fine doing that, but it's been probably what it's been over over almost 10 days now. So it's been about a week since that email. I've been trying to address this over the last week. Uh, this is an urgent matter. I don't need to address the email specifically. I'm just hoping that we as a council can agree that sharing personal health information is inappropriate. If I may. Councillor Harris. Well, it's actually a lot more complicated. We should probably be discussing this in camera because there's also a positive duty to let citizens know if there's a potential threat. Uh, so I think in the context of the information that we had as a council 
and was discussed with staff as well. Um, that's something which is better done in camera. Uh, sort of springing this on the rest of council at the last possible second maybe doesn't lead to a good conversation. I think that at this point in time, I think we should vote on the amendment. I am actually very much pro going in camera and having a discussion with all of us together and have a good discussion. I want to have a good, healthy discussion over this. And I think that's the place to do it, not here. So I think we can explore a bit more. Councillor Walker, then I'm going to call the question on the amendment. Um, the question about going in camera is uh, under what grounds would we be going in camera? The only reason we could do this would be to, if it's relating to a member of staff as well. And if you're inferring that a member of staff is a part of this conversation, then that's fine. But we are not uh, given the privilege of going in camera to talk about um, members of council. That's uh, relates, it's specifically to agents and employees of the town or labor, but not members of the public electorate. Or elected. I'm not sure about that. Can we get a comment from staff perhaps? Because I think it's specific individuals is the wording in the community charter. Daniel, can you clarify or Heather? Well, so Heather, section, yeah, well, section 90 of the community charter does permit us to go in camera when we're talking about personnel. So if this was an inclusion of council talking with staff, then we can discuss it in camera. I do think it should be an in camera item because we have a the email that was sent by Council Harrison also speaks of members of the public in relation to council members' health. So I, I don't think we should be disclosing all of that outside of uh, in camera at this point. We can rise and report after we have the discussion, but I would recommend we do it in camera. Thank you. Call the question on the amendment. Mayor? No, we're done this one. Call uh, a question no, on the amendment. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mayor, I'm I'm willing to debate this. Well, you are, but I don't think we are. I think you, I'm you calling can, the question. You no. can move call the question if you'd like, and we can vote on that. But I just want to say one last thing. You can move call the question. Yeah. Calling the question. All those in favor of the amendment. No, are you moving call the question, or are you moving the amendment? Because I'd like to speak question to the on your amendment. Yeah, I, I'd want to speak one last time to that. No, no, I've, I'm done. I understand you're done, but I, I this is a count. This jobs. isn't a mayor's meeting. This is a council meeting. You can appeal the decision of the chair to call the question. However, the question has been called. All those in favor of the amendment. Sorry, sorry. I was in favor of calling the question. Favor of the amendment. Opposed. Denied. So now we'll go back to the adoption of the agenda as amended. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Staff reports. Daniel. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so as, as we navigate the reality of the pandemic, it's important for staff to have clarity around what we are working on and what business council would like us to, uh, to be advancing. Uh, I, there's a resolution before council and uh, we believe that this resolution helps provide that clarity and it also respects the constraints that we face, particularly those around physical distancing. So uh, around uh, along those lines, this is why this, uh, this one resolution is before council. It is, uh, it is there to allow staff the ability to gain that clarity on what business we are expected to advance and bring forth to council. Councillor Walker, um, I'll I'll move the agenda or I'll move this, um, and I have a question to staff if I could. Moved by Councillor Walker, seconded. I'll second, second. this recommendation. Oh. Thank you, Councillor Westbrook. Discussion, Councillor Walker. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple of points and hopefully an amendment. Um, I guess through the chair to staff, how much staff time would be uh, involved in negotiating or working with the province to find alternatives to this? Can I ask alternatives to this? What, do, what is this? Uh, so we're looking for alternatives for public input in the motion that says alternatives to public input. Um, and so as we, as we set up this framework, uh, how much staff time will be involved to, uh, to do this research and planning and piloting? Well, we, we maintain an open line of communication with the province along what alternatives are being uh, proposed or supported. Right now, when we get into the domain of public hearings, where public hearing is required, we don't have an alternative. So that work 
is paused. There are there have been some examples where, where uh, some communities have opted to hold a public hearing. They simply selected a much larger room and identified appropriate spacing. So they still uh, conducted a live public hearing. Uh, we don't have an alternative to that. So this resolution really simply advances uh, the core business that doesn't require that, that same legislative requirement for, for public input. Um, and but it does it does say that where where we're looking at either uh, specific public input that isn't legislatively required in the same way as a public hearing that we are going to explore those those alternatives with the province and um, and bounce the ideas around as they come forward. So I'm I'm not looking at a huge amount of additional staff time. It's simply an open line of communication around what alternatives are uh, deemed to be reasonable and workable. To I might add, actually, too, that some conversations, Daniel, we've had with uh, Sel Selena Robinson. Uh, we still have the same limitations. Did something go weird there? Yeah. Yes. Nope. Daniel's uh, Zoom. Anyway, this is a discussion that we've had with um, Selena Robinson in, in depth over the last two or three weeks where the province is working on this as well. So I don't think it's any more staff time. I think provincial and municipal staff have been working on this for the three weeks. Councillor Walker. Thank you. So just, just for clarity, I'm speaking to motion 1A, not uh, and just the first motion, not the second motion, uh, in case there was some confusion there. Uh, that's what I moved was just the first of the two motions. Um, and I was just wondering if, as we go through that piloting process, so and staff currently, I guess another question through the chair to staff, uh, do we presently have the bandwidth as far as uh, capacity for staff to be uh, going into piloting and being at the front of this? If if there is if there are concepts to pilot that are online, uh, we do have the ability and the bandwidth to do that. Yes. Okay, perfect. Councillor Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, last uh, is I move to amend this motion, inserting comma our residents after the word the province. And I'll speak to that if I get a seconder. Second. Councillor so, Walker. So I think the motion makes sense. I think it's it's. Uh, it's, I mean, we are elected to represent the town and it's our job to do what we can to advance business with our community. Uh, bearing in mind that our community is older, I wanna make sure that uh, as we work with the province and other partners that we're also working with our residents as we find uh, alternatives to the public uh, input process. Uh, I don't think we need to do a, uh, an extensive engagement process, but I wanna make sure that we are giving opportunity to the public to give feedback on what it is we are uh, proposing uh, as it relates to um, public hearings and, and future community input. Councillor Harrison. I think the problem though is that this is more about the legal structures about input, not about input itself. I think we're mudding the waters a bit by juxtaposing two separate arguments. In this case, this is about how do we legally conduct our business um, and the province and other partners would probably be people like potentially VIHA or other provincial organizations. Um, so I, I don't think that'd be helpful in this instance because I don't think residents could propose things that would have a legal standard if the province isn't there yet. Um, it's really the province that's driving the bus in the circumstance. So I think that the intention is, is all well and good, but I think in terms of the wording, it's not actually uh, directed towards what we're actually moving here. Councillor Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, what this motion says is that we will be piloting alternatives. So we are hoping to be at the fore for creating the new um, framework that we're going to use for public hearings um, and, and likely set a trend for the province. Uh, if we are changing what we're doing, I think it's, I, I don't think we need to do a survey or mail everything out to the community, but I think we need to let the community know what it is we're going to do, what it looks like, and give them a, uh, an opportunity to provide their feedback to, uh, to make sure that uh, we aren't missing any, any important uh, suggestions they may have to that process. Councillor Westbrook. Thank you, Mayor. I think what we're asking staff to do is to look at other ways of providing uh, or receiving public input. The, uh, the addendum, the additional uh, addendum was is partly addressing that. I think until staff comes up with what is an appropriate way to do this, and then we submit it to the public for their input, and that input could be received in a similar fashion as the um, amendment suggests. Thank you. Sorry, just one quick one. 
Councillor Harrison. And just one brief point, I think there's a bit of a grammatical thing where you're saying piloting, but you're assuming it's in relation to the province as a whole, as opposed to our community only. And I think in this case, it means more that we'd be piloting measures that be new for the town of Qualcomm Beach, as opposed to being the first people to implement something in the whole province of British Columbia. Um, I think if you look at how we've conducted our business thus far, other communities have been doing things before we do it. In Zoom meetings, Parksville's had some already. Uh, City of Vancouver's had one recently. Um, in terms of some of the social distancing measures other communities have been before that. So I, I would say that making the logical leap from uh, piloting to having it being at the forefront of the whole province, I think that's a bit of a, a supposition. And I think that's maybe a more of a hypothetical. I'm not certain that actually is reflected in the practice we've been seeing thus far from the town. Councillor Walker. So even if we aren't at the fore of the province, this is gonna represent a change for our community in the way that we deal with things. If we come back and working with the province and partners come up with what seems like a perfect uh, opportunity for public input, and then it turns out it doesn't work with our population due to whether it's uh, poor access to internet connectivity like one, one person in this group, or whether they, they have difficulty with technology or, or whatever it is. I just wanna make sure that, that as we come up with new uh, new methods for our town that we're working with our community uh, for those. Um, so if, if we don't do this amendment, I can't support this motion. I want to make sure that we work with our community to, uh, to come up with uh, changes. I think that the motion in general makes sense, but we have to work with the community as we do this. My view of the world is I, I somewhat agree with that if we we're going long term. I think this, quite frankly, is we're looking for opportunities to get some business done during this pandemic. So I think if we move ahead on that thought, then we can always change things as we come out of this thing if we, we want to do something different. Any further conversation on the amendment? Can I just get clarity on who seconded the amendment? I Councilor Elmer, I believe, yeah. Okay, thank you. All those in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Amendment fails. On the motion as uh, as written, all those in favor? I was hoping to speak to that. Councillor Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so being that we are going to proceed with something like this and not engage with a community outreach plan or have any dialogue in the direction uh, to staff with this change, I cannot support this as it's written. Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Westbrook. Thank you. What we're asking, and I'm, I don't I want to repeat myself, but we're asking staff to come up with some other approaches. And once we have those alternatives, we will get feedback. This town is not backwards to come forward with their opinion on what we're doing. So we will get public input. And I think, as I said, the amendment that we're talking about later on the agenda will kind of indicate how we're going to go about that. Thank you. Call the question. All those in favor? Mr. Mayor, I was hoping to speak to that. I had my hand up. One more time, Mr. Walker. I just wanted to say that uh, as we go through all these processes, uh, we tend to, and I don't want to say we make mistakes, but what, what we tend to do is aggravate some members of the community by jumping forward with something before doing the, uh, the engagement. And, and yes, we can change. If we, if we implement something that doesn't work, we will hear from our residents. Uh, but I think it's much more prudent for us to ask their input first uh, and then use that as, uh, as almost permission um, and then we can we can then if it doesn't work we can say well we reached out to the community and they didn't they did not uh, have any concerns at the time so um, in response to what Councillor Westbrook said. Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. I'm going to move her on the second one. I move I'll move move the second one. Nope. Moved by Councillor Westbrook. Seconded by Councillor Harrison. Discussion. Councillor Walker. Um, oops, sorry about that. Um, I guess first is question through the chair to staff. This could be interpreted in two different ways. Um, and I'm wondering if this is, if this is to uh, direct staff to do the work of council, or if we're just as a council trying to be clear that we are going to be moving forward with council business. My interpretation is that we, <clears throat> the intent of this is that we're going to move forward with council business. Okay. Councillor Walker. Um, perhaps it's a, a minor change, but I'll move to amend substituting uh, the word staff with council. Second that. Um, 
I'm, may, may I ask, so we're looking at the second that, so now I would read that council be directed to continue the timely business of council? <laughs> Is that? Councillor Walker. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm, the motion is, it doesn't really make sense either way as it's written. I mean, we can't direct staff to continue the business of council because council does the business of council. Um, I agree that having a motion that says that council be directed to continue, I mean, that also is, I, I think this whole motion could be uh, more clear if it was, was rewritten, but I, I didn't, uh, I didn't take the time to do that. I think it's important that we let the community know that uh, we continue to work. We're hoping to uh, to advance the business that uh, that we can legally and, and meaningfully do. Um, but I don't want to have a motion that says staff is continued to do the work of council because it's not staff's job to do council's work. Um, so yes, I agree it's grammatically uh, not so great, but uh, perhaps uh, if somebody else has a, an alternate wording, that would be appreciated. Councillor Westbrook. Well, I, I don't have alternate wording, but typically, uh, people come to the town, they, they'll contact the building inspector, they'll contact the planner, the engineer, and they continue working with people. And then when it needs a council decision, it will come to us. That's how it works. So we're just telling them basically to continue with that type of business. Council still makes a decision if it requires a decision from them. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Harrison. Um, as someone who actually has a degree in English, um, the grammatic, grammar for me is fine. Uh, I don't see a huge problem. And I interpret this as just saying that business is going to be continued as best we can, given the current circumstances. Uh, for council to direct council is a bit of a tautology. And quite frankly, it's uh, sort of like Alice in Wonderland almost. Uh, that council will direct just decide the business of council, well, that's not really a motion we really need. Um, so I think to make that amendment would actually make it irrelevant uh, as a motion. Uh, council directs council to do council business. Um, whereas if it's council directing staff to carry on as best you can given the circumstances, that for me is just more an indication that we're gonna try to do our best to keep things moving during the current crisis. I agree then with both you and Councillor Westbrook at this point. Councillor, um, perhaps if I, Filmer. Councillor Filmer, thank you. I don't mind. I understand where Councillor Walker is coming from, and I don't mind the current wording either. Um, my concern is I want to make sure that we're not trying to download our powers onto staff. Staff's already got certain powers, um, and I, I'm not in favor of if that's the purpose of this to download some of that onto that, um, and then just making council a rubber stamp at the end of this, whether we're calling it during this pandemic or whatnot. I don't want to be downloading powers and then creating council to be the rubber stamp. Um, I, if that's not the intention, then that, that's fine. That's the way I interpreted the motion. So I want to make sure that that's not the route that we're going. Uh, Councillor Filmer, I, I agree with what, what you're saying. And I don't believe that's what the intent was. I think uh, staff always have their role. And then when we need to be involved as a council, that's when it comes back to us again. Like, they don't do our job and we don't do theirs is the, the preference, right? So council, I mean, uh, Daniel, and then back to Councillor Phil. Um, so uh, I, I just want to echo what, what you already said, uh, Your Worship. Uh, this is no new special power to staff. This is just direction that we're continuing with business as usual. And we're going to continue bringing that forward through form of reports uh, to council for decisions where appropriate. Thank you. Councillor Filmer, do you want to reply one more time? I'm going to go back to Councillor Walker. You know, that, that's fine. That, that clarifies it for me. I just I wanted to make sure because, I mean, there have been decisions made in the recent months that have just been allowed to be made on the staff level, and then people automatically go to council and go, what the heck happened here? And it, you know, it wasn't us that made the decision. It was staff that made the decision. But at the end of the day, we have to wear it no matter what. So I want to make sure that whatever business we're doing, if the heat's created by us, we need to take the heat and need to keep that part of the business going. I think it's really important that it comes to council if we need council direction or approval. There's some things, I think you were probably referring to the wetlands, that that's a count, that was a staff decision because it didn't need to come to us because there was no variance, there was no OCP change, it was just business as usual. Why it did it not come to us? So I understand where you're coming from. We, we, we wear the heat, absolutely. But sometimes staff need to do their business and we just need to let them do that. Councillor Walker. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I can withdraw that motion and replace it with um, a, a motion to amend that says that council will continue as opposed to the uh, messy language. Seconder for that. I'll second that. Further discussion? Um, Councillor Walker. Yeah, I, I think this is good. I think this is a, a resolution that says that council's here to do business, uh, but we don't have to worry about it saying that council directs staff to do our business. So I think that that, um, even though I'm hearing from everybody that uh, that I'm interpreting this incorrectly, it, it is it's something that can be interpreted two ways. And I think that corrects that. And with this change, I, yeah, I definitely support this motion. Further discussion? All those in favor of Councillor Walker's amendment? Opposed? As read in the paper, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. Corporate Administration, Heather Spenson. Thank you. So there's a motion uh, before you in the report just suggesting that we move the April 22nd and council meeting and the May 13th council meeting to 10 a.m. given during the COVID uh, crisis. I'll move the recommendation. Second. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously, thank you. Thank you. And then the additional item that we added to the agenda was the re resolution on the green sheet um, to have electronic input at council meetings. So it was brought to our attention that there's normally a section at the end of our council meeting for comments from the gallery. And we still wish to encourage the public to give input during the COVID crisis. And so the resolution before you is to have uh, a communications at qualcombeach.com email address has been set up and we can still receive information from the public through email um, at that address or through letter mail, either dropped at the town hall box or through regular post. And obviously phone calls we can also take uh, as we are operating on regular office hours of nine to four, Monday to Friday. Someone move the staff recommendation. Councillor Westbrook, thank you. I moved it. Second staff recommendation, I'd like to speak to it. Okay, second seconded. it. Councillor Harrison, seconding. Councillor Westbrook. Um, I actually, uh, Ms. Swenson just indicated that people could still phone, but that doesn't say that in here. And I thought, I wonder if it should be spelled out that people can also make a phone call to a specific number, perhaps Haley or Heather or, or whoever, so that they can phone. They may not have access to email or not be able to go to the post office to, to put, drop a letter in the mail. So I think a phone call, I've got, I used to get lots of phone calls and I think I counted as public input as well. Thank you. So I'd like to make an amendment that we add or by phone, by telephone. I'll second that. Thank you. Further discussion on the amendment? Just briefly. Councillor Harrison. So uh, if I may, just through the chair to staff, um, would that be then notes being taken by the person uh, who receives the call? Yes. Okay. Further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. The motion as amended. No, oh, I wanna discuss the motion. Councillor Felmer. Thank you. I think at, at the end when we should be looking at all options for to try to include public input. You look at what the city of Nanaimo is doing. Um, city of Nanaimo, their residents, can, they can watch the meetings live when they're online and can send in a message um, that staff or the corporate administrator um, gets as the meeting's going. Um, then that's still comments coming in and council, the, the staff member reads them out and so at least council's still hearing um, and it's all still part of the meeting and it's all still happening. I think we should be looking at all options. Um, the city of Nanaimo, they're not just doing that during the COVID crisis, they're doing it during their regular meetings as well where people can log in live and send in their comments um, you know, as a message and then it's read out at the meeting. Um, not, not for debate or for council comment, but it's still allowing those comments to be put in. I think we should look at all options, especially something like that. I think that, Councillor Filmer, I believe that's uh, mostly to do with public input towards things, not necessarily comments from the gallery. So I think the two are separate. I believe they're separate. Comments from the gallery, 
I think should be done via email, come in after. Anyone who's watching the live stream um, meeting, or if they're in a the gallery, they all deserve the equal opportunity to make comment at the end. So I think this is a good thing. Then public input during a meeting, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Councillor Westbrook. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think to have public input during a, a meeting would be appropriate as we used to have the committee to hold meetings where people can actually participate before we make a recommendation to council. So it's quite, quite appropriate. The other thing, which I thought for a long time was very, uh, could be very useful, if we have a budget meeting where not everybody can attend, but they can participate um, as, as a meeting uh, unfolds by asking particular questions on the items brought forward by staff or council. So for what, for this purpose, I think, I think we're good. This is, this is, I think clarifies a number of issues, but when we, if we had a budget meeting or if we had a whole meeting, I would agree with Council Filmer that we should allow people to participate as a meeting is happening. Thank you. I think it's a little different too. If I remember correctly in talking with Mayor Crowe before, I think they've actually eliminated their committee the whole meetings so that they have to allow input in a different forum altogether. So that could be part of the reason. Further discussion, Councillor Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got an amendment. Are we debating both these motions? Are they both conjoined? The motion I made was for the joint. Okay. Um, I'll first I'll move to amend both, adding during the public or during the provincial health emergency to the end of both of these. Second. Further discussion on the amendment. Councillor Westbrook. I think that was the intent that during this period we would have that um, process in place. However, if it works, uh, we may continue with this after the um, uh, COVID-19 crisis is over. Uh, because in my opinion, uh, when people are watching online and we're asking comments from the gallery, they should also be able to participate. So rather than sitting there at the end of a council meeting, taking these comments, which we, which we don't respond to, and whether there's a question or a comment, we don't debate it, um, why not have it all? going through this email address that you've just identified in this motion. So I think if this works, I think we may continue on indefinitely, but um, for now, I think this is only meant to be in place for this uh, COVID crisis. Thank you. Councillor Harrison and Councillor Walker. Um, so firstly, I, I do think that Councillor Filmer raised a really good point about what Nanaimo is doing. Um, as we're not really doing Committee of the Holes right now, uh, for obvious reasons, that might be something that's interesting. Um, I would flag potentially, how do we verify the people are who they say they are online? Might be one issue, but it's a good conversation to have. Um, and it's certainly something I think we should be uh, sort of informally looking at, if nothing else, as we move forward. Um, for my two cents, I think that in terms of, uh, I think that there, for this motion, this is intended to be temporary. I would have serious issues if, when there's a vaccine available at some point and life returns to more normal, normalcy, that we don't have a discussion on this as part of looking at our procedure bylaw. Um, but I think that's a conversation for much later. I think this is just more of a temporary measure. Um, so I, I used to support this as now with the understanding that it's not how we're gonna do business permanently, it's just how we're gonna do things in while we're in the thick of it. Further discussion? Seeing none, we're voting on the amendment. All those in favor? Can you read out the amendment please, Senator, or somebody? It'll just be added to the end of the resolution that it'll be during the provincial health emergency. Okay, that's all right. Councillor Harrison. Uh, just uh, as a further point, there are two provincial health emergencies at present. Uh, I can, so one. I can one friendly the, amend that to say COVID during the, the yeah. provincial <laughs> yeah. COVID. Just because the uh, opioid uh, provincial state of emergency, I think, is in its third or fourth year now. Four now. It's not my phone. It's all right. The landline. <laughs> All those in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. As the motion has amended, no, all those in favor? No, no, Mr. Mayor, I got a question on the motion. Councillor Walker. Um, so I've got a, a, are we going to require that they, they submit? So if they're doing this by email or by phone, are we going to require or, or suggest that they submit their name and street address as a question through to share to staff? 
I would say absolutely. Yes, definitely. So I guess through the chair to staff, should we amend the motions to reflect this? Uh, I, if I may, Mr. Mayor, um, I think that's a good idea. Just to spell it out that people need to identify who they are uh, with their phone number, of course, their email address or their um, their um, street address. I think that's a, that's entirely appropriate because we can request that when, when people come to us at the end of the council meeting. I think it's just their name and their street address. I don't think yeah. we need their phone number. Mm -hmm. Councillor Phil. No. Thank you. That just ties into another question. When our minutes come out, um, we have comments from the gallery that are included in our minutes. Um, so are we going to be erasing that out of our minutes? Because we're going to have to make sure that when the comments are coming in via email or phone call, that they're not past the meeting. Um, you know, if someone sends in an email and after the meeting's already happened, those that's that would be included as um, the comments from the gallery in that part of the meeting. And then is that those comments that are coming in, whether it's prior or during the meeting, um, are those going to be included in the minutes? I, I was expecting they would be. Yeah, I, I was expecting that I would take the, something we would have to sort out logistically, but I was expecting that we would take the comments the next day to include into the minutes because people yeah. have an opportunity, they, they usually answer at the end of the meeting. Right. So we take them that night, the next day, and then cut it off. Yeah. I would hope that maybe we would have some sort of vetting that we wouldn't have the typical comments we get at the end of a meeting. Which no, we, are sorry. somewhat derogatory and rude that those would not be included in the minutes, of course. No, we would just, anytime that happens, even for the minutes now when we're live, we always just put the name, their location, and then whatever the topic was. I don't verbatim, if they say something that's, you know, not politically correct or it just says they spoke on trail network or they spoke on whatever Very so good. it would be the, it would be the same it wouldn't be the whole attachment if they write me a two-page letter it's still just going to have the topic yeah oh very good thank you yeah further discussion councillor walker uh, thank you so i i also had that minutes uh what i was going to suggest was that we take the first 150 words or the first 100 words of every email and just include that in the minutes um, that's equivalent to one minute of somebody speak. It could be even the first 50 words. Um, then, then staff don't have to go through reread all of these emails. They just click paste, click paste, click paste. So I'm not sure through the chair to staff if that's something that uh, that would save time or if that would just create create a headache. No, that would just create a headache. It's supposed to just be the comment. If you you'll notice on now the minutes, it's very short. I, I don't even if someone stands and takes the whole two minutes to talk, I don't put that in there. It's just, what was the topic? There's no dialogue, there's no questions. It's, they got up and spoke on X, Y, Z. So I, I don't wanna be take, cause I think then this might be an opportunity where they think they're gonna have their say in the minutes forever. Okay. Councilor Walker. Uh, I guess, uh, so through the chair to staff, is there gonna be any need for a motion that states that they will need to supply their name and address uh, or any need to state in the motion that these will be applied, applied to the minutes or is that just understood by all? I think we'll include it in our communication piece when we post something, like we're gonna have to advertise this, so this is what we're doing. So we'll get some media, you know, included in our media release that, that this is the form of communication for the public now to re write to this address and we can include in there that they all need to state their name and address. Very good. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. John. Good morning. Good morning. So um, the report um, before you is on a revenue anticipation borrowing bylaw. And as such, there's a bylaw that goes with the report. The um, community charter um, dictates how municipalities operate in terms of these types of issues. And this type of issue is, is referenced as cash flow. If a, if a municipality in British Columbia potentially has some cash flow issues, and in this case, COVID is bringing it more to light, but in general, uh, municipalities will often have cash flow issues on the first half of the year until such time that the property tax is their levy. 
and then the municipalities get the um, tax monies and they have sufficient cash flow to carry through with the year. So communities who don't have, have sufficient reserves, and there are many of them, they run into cash flow issues early in every year. So a lot, if not most communities in BC have a revenue anticipation borrowing bylaw. The town, at least in terms of how long I've been with the town, which is approximately 25 years, we, we've had sufficient um, cash flows that we have tended to not need a revenue anticipation borrowing bylaw, even though we have one under old legislation. And the old legislation allowed us to borrow up to $2 million short term for cash that were short as a result of the taxes not being levied. So on my um, work plan, to the CAO about a year and a half ago, I identified that we would probably have to look at a revenue anticipation borrowing bylaw. And it was a result of um, um, using up reserves to purchase land, the St. Andrews property. Well, it turned out that, you know, it wasn't imminent that we needed it. So it was on my work plan to come to council this year. So the bylaw that's before you has, has been planned. COVID, and, and the issue that communities may have um, less cash flow, um, like tax collections, or the report even identifies the fact that we have to pay other governments. So we collect, we bill taxes for regional districts, school taxes, municipal taxes. In total, it's about 20 million. About half of it is for other governments, mainly being the regional district and the um, provincial government for school taxes. So what happens is in late July and on August 1st, in the town's case, we have to pay about $5 million to other governments for property tax. So if we don't have the cash because of tax collections or if the tax due date, and I'll speak to this later, if the tax due date is extended. So if you don't have the cash, and we have to pay the other governments this money, we need a bylaw in place that authorizes us to temporarily borrow from the bank to be able to pay this cash flow. So in our case, we haven't needed this bylaw for a number of years. We were getting a little bit concerned with the land purchase and then we, we had a, um, a strategy to sell some land which would replenish the reserves. That, that hasn't been, um, quite as quick in terms of um, what, at a staff level anyways, that we expected might occur. So as a result of that, we could be short of cash to pay the, ca the, the other governments on July 31st or August 1st, and that's about $5 million. Right now, we have about $7 million in the bank, but we're paying for, for operations, capital projects, and that money will will continue to be um, eroded, the cash flow. So we could be in a situation to need cash. So this bylaw is a just in case situation of borrowing for cash. And if you look on the agendas of, of just about every municipality in BC, they're looking at this right now on a just in case basis. They're, they're revising their dollar amounts in case they need cash. That's what we're doing. The other factor here, and I spoke to it earlier, was the tax due date. Something that municipalities are looking at is potentially um, changing the due date when property taxes is um, when they're levied. In our case, um, staff have done some preliminary work on a bylaw in that regard about considering um, a change in the tax due date. Right now, the due date is July, first business day in July. But if we extended that to the first business day in August or September or October, whatever the case might be, that changes our collections and then our cash flow. What we've delayed in coming to council on with respect to that report, even though it is, it is addressed in the staff report, we say that a separate report will be written on that issue. We're kind of waiting for what our, um, one, we are waiting for the provincial government to see if they would change the legislation as to when we had to pay other governments. In other words, the regional district, in our case, 4 million in late July and, and the school district another million. So, and, and at this point they've said, no, they're not changing the deadlines. 
So then what we're waiting for is municipalities and we're in discussions with our local partners, Nanaimo, um, Parksville, Lanceville, just to see what, what the tax due dates are and we're coming, trying to come up with a common approach. Ultimately, council has to make that decision in terms of if the due date has changed. But if, for instance, you change the due date to September 1st, and we had to pay other governments $5 million on August 1st, we might be short of cash. That's what this bylaw is all about. And um, I, and what it costs us to do that is, is some interest costs if we have to borrow money. And the interest costs like um, per million per month is about 1,700. So let's say we were short 5 million because we had to pay to other governments. For one for one month, it'd be around eighty five hundred dollars the 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 cost of that. So the dollars, it's significant, but in in the larger scheme of things, not that significant given all the other hardships that the public and society is dealing with COVID. So that will be a separate report on the tax due date. That'll be coming likely at the next council meeting. But for now, just to make sure, depending on what occurs down the road that we have sufficient cash, we're asking council to update our revenue anticipation bylaw, which authorizes the town to borrow up to 9 million. We're not expecting to have to borrow up to 9 million. It could be say half that, it could be even less, but it's, it's on a just in case basis. I feel like it, it's a little harder on this, um, on the Zoom versus in camera. And I feel like I'm a little bit babbling on here, so I, I will close my comments for now, and I'd welcome any questions that council may have. Councillor Westbrook. Thank you, Commissioner. I think that was an excellent report, well written and well articulated just now. Um, I don't think you're babbling on at all, John. I would move first reading. Second. Second. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? I, I've got my hand up. Well, I didn't see your hand up. Councillor Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a question through the chair to staff. Um, I know this, or I, I understand this. Uh, this has not been used previously, even though the bylaw was in place. Uh, is there any um, method of disclosure when town when the town takes upon debt through this? It's temporary. Is there any disclosure of that debt that's made either to council or to the public at that time? Uh, there's not a requirement to do that, but certainly, um, and I don't need direction of council to do that. I. I could put that on my monthly staff report when we, if if and when we um, utilize the that bylaw, that's public information and part of um, public accountability. And if we get to that point, I think that would be a good idea to to disclose um, what our bank balance is. So, for instance, yeah, it it it's a good idea. We could do that through our monthly report. Thank you, Councillor Walker. Um, I will support the first three readings of this as written, but I'm hoping after we vote on first reading, if I can make a resolution of council that uh, we request that staff uh, disclose that information at their financial reports, um, then that eliminates any of the transparency issues I have on this. Uh, I think being that we've got a while until July, I think doing three readings and then letting the public provide any input they have uh, is probably prudent. I know we can do all four in one meeting, but uh, I, I don't see any urgency in us needing to do this all all today. I believe the motion on the floor is just first reading. Is that correct? Yeah. That's my motion. Any further discussion on that? Councillor Philman. Thank you. I'm in favor of trying to get this bylaw in place. Obviously, it's something that's needed. Um, I think part of the bigger discussion we need to have, though, is if residents aren't able um, you know, we're going to have their, their utility bills and everything else, and we need to look at start or what we're going to do for our small businesses and our businesses in town. I think that's the discussion that council really needs to be having, um, as well as we might have to start looking at our capital projects as well. Um, might not be the smartest move right now um, if we are going to be hurting financially to start moving forward with our big um, capital projects. I agree that they all need to go, and I agree from the staff level they want to keep those capital projects going so that they have jobs. Um, for the contract work and, and for our own staff. But um, financially, that decision's on us and whether that's gonna be the smartest decision, I think that's a discussion we need to be having next um, is how are we gonna be helping our businesses, our residents, when it comes to utilities and whatnot, um, and then our capital projects. Um, it'll be a small delay, but we need to make sure that we have the cash there. And if we do capital projects, then we no longer have the cash. Um, 
you know, it's going to be on the five of us. I agree with the conversation that has to happen, Councillor Fuller. And I also believe that capital projects that we choose to move forward on will help stimulate the economy. So it's going to be a catch-22 in, in some ways with the capital projects. Further discussion on, we're still on uh, reading number one, I believe, Councillor Fuller. Yeah. And I was saying, I'll just keep that one, just to respond to that. Um, I agree that we need to keep the, the capital projects going um, to stimulate the economy, but I don't know if we need to be doing them right now. Um, absolutely, once this crisis is over, we're gonna need you know, something in the hopper to get everything going. Um, but to be starting projects during this time, um, is just gonna put us in a tighter pinch. Um, so it, it'd be a discussion to have, and hopefully it's a discussion soon before other projects start, uh, start underway. Agreed. Councillor Harrison, Councillor Westbrook after. Councillor Harrison. I muted myself when the phone was going off and there was a dog whining at the door. Um, but I would say just two things to consider is that for our region, we're still also recovering from the forestry strike, which was almost eight months. Uh, so a lot of contractors were already in a very tight position before COVID-19. Um, so we do, we might want to consider that the longer this break goes on with reduced revenue, their bills, I'm not sure that a contractor who's got a huge amount of debt for his equipment is going to get debt forgiveness uh, from the companies he's rent, uh, basically got the equip equipment from or from the banks. Um, so I do think that we might want to consider that if we wait too long for some of these capital projects, there might not be as many contractors to actually do the work. Um, we found during the awarding the grant for the trail construction that we actually got a significantly discounted rate because it was a difficult time for many contractors. So I think it might be in terms of uh, when you're looking at road work, the disruption to the public would be as minimal as it possibly could be. And then in terms of the cost to the town, it might actually be significantly less given the current circumstances. So sure. it might actually be beneficial both from a financial perspective uh, to both stimulate the economy, but also get the best deal for the town itself while causing the minimal amount of disruption uh, for people who are traveling on the roads. But I think this is more of a separate conversation from this actual motion itself. Um, but it is a good conversation to have. Absolutely. Councillor Westbrook. I think um, Councillor Harrison said exactly what I had in mind to saying about traffic, about keeping businesses going. And the federal government, and again this morning, Prime Minister Trudeau um, filled in a lot of cracks for people to fall through where they could get financial support for businesses or if they're laid off as a private contractor or uh, individual um, contractor. So I think, I think for us to, to pass this bylaw is entirely appropriate and look at some of the other consequences later. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Felmer. Uh, I agree with everything that's being said. I just want to make sure that at the end of the day, our job is to protect the public purse. You know, our job is not to be able to employ contractors in tough times um, when we're also in a tough time. Our number one job um, before employing contractors and other businesses is to protect our public purse. Um, so I just want to make sure that that's the, the number one priority and it's not make sure other people are working. It's to make sure we're protecting the limited funds that we have. Okay, I think this definitely is a conversation for another time. All important conversation, I'm not dismissing anything. Uh, let's vote on first reading. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. Does anyone move I'll the move second and third reading? I'll move second and third reading. Right. I think we may have to take each one separately. Sometimes in financial matters, you have to move every uh, recommend, every reading separately so i'll move second reading no i'll second that but i was hoping to speak between uh, as i said between first and second reading there and i had my hand raised first so if i could have the floor after second reading that'd be appreciated thank you further discussion seeing none all those in favor opposed carried thank you councillor walker Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through the chair to Director of Finance, uh, what information could we add to our uh, financial reports um, that wouldn't create too much time for you, but would create a bit more transparency as it relates to uh, this temporary borrowing, but also potentially um, uh, financial uh, reserves or, or other balances that could be relevant? The, um, in terms of the revenue anticipation bylaw, the question is, it, it, is easy is 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 just that um, if if the town um, uh, requires the need that um, to utilize the revenue anticipation borrow, borrowing bylaw that it it be indicated on the monthly reports that that um, go to um, that are public the public finance report at the council meeting. 
So I think that part's simple. The other part in terms of um, reserves and, and, and just the overall effect of um, COVID, that's a little bit more open-ended and, and, and difficult right here to say, except um, maybe something a little um, um, more broadly, something like, um, and that the director of finance be um, directed to, to provide, um, publicly provide information as to the effect of um, the current COVID situation as it relates to town finances, something indirect like that. And then we would add the uh, appropriate information that that is required in our monthly reports. It's public information. So we have no, no issue or reservation with doing that. It'll just be a, um, there'll be a bit of a timing issue in terms of when the reports have to be to go to council. But generally speaking, uh, that's what our job is, is, is to provide that information. Thank you. Very well said. Councillor Walker. So this will be a bit of a mess and I'm hoping that our corporate administrator can fix the wording, but uh, I move that council direct staff to include in future finance reports uh, any temporary borrowing and further that council direct staff to um, prepare a report on uh, the financial impacts of this COVID uh, crisis um, uh, uh, when appropriate. I'll take that. Just for the discussion on that. Seeing none, all those in favor? Okay. Opposed? Carried, thank you. I'll move third reading. I think we're on second, are we? Third. Oh, we're on third. Okay. Heather, did we get second completed? We did. Yeah. Third reading, thank you. Seconded? Councillor Filmer. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. And I, I think actually that between third reading and adoption, uh, we're gonna have a meeting next uh, week. Um, if the public wants to provide some input on this, I think, or have questions, I think it's totally appropriate to delay adoption until the next, next, next meeting, which is next week. I wholeheartedly agree. So no one's moving the fourth reading, so I think that move adjournment. concludes. Excuse me? I move adjournment. That concludes our meeting, gentlemen. I'll second the adjournment. I didn't hear the adjournment, sorry. Well, I, I said I moved to adjournment, sorry. There you go. Seconded. All in favor? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank you. Good meeting.